Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You see, at some point in your walk with God, your conviction has to be stronger than man's opinion. There's got to come a point in your life where your convictions dictate the next decision you're going to make for God. And let me tell you something. What is the problem with, with, with humanity? I think the greatest problem is that um, there's, there's purpose that you find from God or discover from God. But then there's popularity. So there's purpose versus popularity. And most of us, without even knowing it, are always looking for the popular route. For example, we care more about what people think than we do about what God thinks. Why? We're conditioned that way. I mean, think about social media. You know, we, we post something and we want like, like, like. We want everybody to like what we post. You get a new haircut, you want at least five people to validate that new haircut. You get a new outfit and you determine whether or not you're going to wear that outfit again based on someone else's opinion. You get a new house, a new car, and you're having to ask people, hey, what do you think of my house? Hey, what do you think of my car? And we live this way not realizing that the world has been conditioning us for so long that we live for the popularity of man versus the purposes and the plans of God. God's path is the most resistant path. It's not popular. Here you have a guy who is willing to, to stand up to the United States Army. And though he respected the fact that it's the military and the military obviously goes to war and in war people die. But he discovered that God had a specific plan for him in that army, in that military there was something beyond what everybody else does the popular thing was to grab a gun go to war and kill some people that was the popular thing to do obviously I mean it's what you do when you join the military it comes with the territory but it's so unpopular when you're willing and ready to stand up for your convictions when you're ready to stand up for the things that you value and when you have people coming against you and you're able to stand for your convictions and to know exactly what God called you to do versus what man wants you to do. And so I understand that as we, and I encourage you, go, go home and watch the, the rest of the movie, Hacksaw Ridge. There's so many truths that you can find and discover in this movie. But we know that it's a true story of a courageous, conscientious objector. Of course, he said, I'm not an objector, I'm a cooperator. And so he cooperates with the fact that there's, there's, there's a war to be fought, but he knows his part or his role that he plays within the military. Do you know that though you may have a career, a job, you know, doing something that you're passionate about, there's a part for you to play for God in that place? There's something specific that God will use in the workplace that you're at right now. But you have to discover what that is. And so many times we're too consumed with trying to be popular that we never really find out the purpose of why we exist. You're not on planet earth just to suck up the air of the earth. You're on planet earth with a divine purpose. God does not make accidents. God does not create accidents. God created you with an intention. And our job is to find out what that intention is. Our job is to discover his divine plan for our life as so this man did. His convictions were so strong because of his relationship that he had with God. I love one of his uh, 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 statements there was, I, I believe what I believe. It's that simple. I wonder how many of us really believe what we claim to believe. I think we're, we're very good at, at holding information, but information without application brings no transformation. At some point, you have to start applying what you claim to believe. At some point, what you believe must become the conviction of your life. It must govern the decisions that you make in life at some point. And this man, though he had so much opposition with telling them, yes, I'm called to go to war without a weapon. Yet, they thought, impossible. However, <laughs> he receives a medal of honor 
for saving 75 lives. Now, I know that when you think of a story like that, like, wow, wasn't that cute? He saved 75 lives. No, let's take it to a whole other level here. He was on this hacksaw a ridge, which you saw them climbing up to this mountain and trying to conquer this during World War II with Japan. But let me tell you something. If you read and study what really took place that day, while everyone was retreating and climbing off the mountain, he, the man of God, the man who knew he was called by God, was running into the fire, was running into the action. When you do something for God, there is no retreat. When you do something for God, when God has called you to do something specific, once you find out why you exist, there is no retreating. You will not allow nothing and no one to cause you to be distracted from the purposes of God. Now, on this mountain, man, when he was there, it was being bombed like all night long. In addition to the Japanese shooting their weapon as this guy, Desmond, is saving people's lives. Think about this. How is it that this man can be in the midst of gunfire and bombshells and all these different things and nothing hits him? It's shocking. But you know what? I asked myself, what was it about this guy? What was it? You know what it was? It was purpose that kept him alive. When you are living on God's purpose when you are living with God's plan God will back you up God will protect you God will provide for you God will lead you God will direct you but when you're living for you let me tell you something you find yourself constantly being on that cycle right of dysfunction and God's saying hey listen your job is to seek me with all your heart and you're going to find me and when you find me you'll find you the only reason that people don't find what they were born to do is because they haven't found God yet. We know him up here, but God wants you to know him in here. Because once you know him in here, let me tell you something. Your convictions will be stronger than any person's approval. Stop looking for the approval of man and start looking for the approval of God. Because God has approved this message today. Amen. Amen. Gloria a Dios. <laughs> Everybody say purpose. purpose. So one by one, he's, he keeps praying the same prayer. God, one more. God, one more. You know what? Right now, maybe there are people here right now, you're tired. You just pray that faith prayer. Say, God, one more time. God, one more. I'll look one more time. I'll believe one more time. I'll just trust you. What if we just started speaking the one more? There's something powerful about one more. Maybe you've been trying to execute something in your life and you've had failure after failure. You've had setback after setback. Let me tell you, God's people have a one more spirit. I'm going to go one more time. I'm going to believe one more time. I'm going to press one more time. Get a one more spirit on the inside of you and see what God will do when you have a one more. Listen. Your strength comes from above. Your strength comes from above. Right now, in your own flesh, I agree with you. You're weak. But in God, you're strong. In God, he'll give you the wisdom. In God, he'll give you the understanding. In God, he'll give you the vision. In God, he'll give you the plans. But it has to be in him, not in you. When you get more of God, there'll be less of you. You start looking more like Jesus. What I like about Desmond and his story, true story again, once again, right? True story. Is that he was a Bible guy. I love that. He got wounded. We know we see there he kicked a grenade and, and then the grenade explodes and he gets hurt. In reality, he was shot four times. Um, and uh, the only time that he picked up a gun, a rifle, was he ended up using uh, part of the rifle as a splinter for his arm when he was shot. But it's amazing that while he's wounded, he's calling out to his guys. He's more consumed where, with, where is my Bible? But so many of us today, we're more consumed with our wounds than we are consumed with the power of the word of God. We're wounded. And please, I, I, I want to be, be sensitive to your wounds. But at what point... Does, does the word of God, at one point, does the Bible become so much more powerful than the wounds of man? 
We've all been wounded. We've all experienced trauma. We've all experienced something in life that has caused us to be so, uh, but let me tell you something. At some point, you have to go ahead and forfeit the wounds so that Jesus can come in and heal those wounds. Time does not heal. God heals. And once you get that revelation, I'm telling you, you'll discover the purpose and plan for your life. I want to read you a verse. But before I do, I want you to just think about the word Bible. And I'm sure many of you have heard this, but I'll bring it back again because many of us know this and don't do it. Bible has an acronym. Look it up on the screen. Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. It's the basic instruction. It's the basic instruction before leaving earth. If it's the basic instruction, let me tell you something. The Bible has all the answers to your problems right now. The Bible is the place where you'll discover who you were called to be. It gives you an identity of who you are in Christ Jesus. It's the Bible. It's the instruction book. It tells me when I'm broken, I go back to the source who can fix broken. When I'm busted, I go back to the source who can fix busted. And so the Bible is the source for everything in our life. It's the instruction book of the church. It prepares us not only to do the work on earth, but it's preparing us for the place that we call heaven. The Bible, it's powerful. We need some more Bible girls. We need some more Bible guys. Listen, I love technology. And you see our church, we're very, very creative. But let me tell you something. There's nothing like holding a Bible, smelling the pages of a Bible, turning the pages of a Bible. Glory to Jesus, right? It's almost historical now, right? Like, ooh. But this is awesome. This is powerful. Think about it. This word, it's not just inspirational words. They're words that transform your life. This is a prophetic word. It's a prophetic story. It's a love story of what God wants to do with your life. I want us to please get this today because you know what? You are not too old to start doing what God purposed you to do. And you're not too young. You're not too pretty and you're not too ugly. God God has called every single one of us to have a part in making this world just a little bit better. But it requires for the church to respond And not just to keep living life, just to live it and and have fun and and obtain the house and the car. And listen, I I love all that stuff. Nothing wrong with obtaining stuff. But I I promise you, at the age of 41, I can care less about owning a house now. And I, I I don't care about those things anymore. There was a time where I was working hard. I wanted the white picket fence. I wanted the nice cars. And once again, nothing wrong with that. But when you're just consumed with trying to just obtain and obtain and obtain, and then there's nothing that resembles God in your life, there's no sacrifice. There's nothing that says, man, that I've been through something. Listen, the, 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 the most resistant path, is always going to be a God path. No matter what, no one said you are not the exception of having to just have a call of God with no challenges in it. Trust me, if there is no resistance in your life right now, I would be scared about your life. Because that means you're cruising. That means that you're living the popular life. You're living the life of, I just want to be liked. That doesn't work with God. That doesn't work. God created you for a divine purpose. Your job is to discover it. But you will never discover it until you have an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the only way that you'll ever find out what you've been called to do. Pastor, no, I got my career. I'm doing my call. Okay, but the souls come within that career choice that you made. Are people getting saved? Are people being healed? Does anyone even know that you're a Christian? Most people are nervous to even open this thing called the Bible in the workplace. You know why? Because we're scared of what people think. Approval of man again. People are going to think I'm religious. No, stop making up those excuses. You're just afraid or you're ashamed to open up and really believe what you say you believe. Oh, that's real good right there. 
Let's be honest. Can we just be real? Like, what if, what if you were to just, boom, drop this on lunch hour, and you just started reading right there in the lunchroom? Man, you know what it'll do? It'll attract some people. Man, it's like eating some carne asada and then flies just come. It's so good. It is, man. People want some of that carne asada. Right? It attracts the flies. Listen, the word does its work. It doesn't need your help. The moment you open this, people come. Why? Because you're no longer looking like the crowd. You're looking a little bit different. Wow. Hey, what's that? It's a Bible. Why do you read that Bible? Because this is the basic instruction before I leave this earth. This this is the word that sustains me. This is the word that nurtures me. This is the word that changed my life. This is powerful. We're talking about a man who had a real story. He had much opposition. He had lots of resistance. Nobody believed in him. Yet, he went and accomplished what God called him to do. Never used a weapon. His only weapon was the Bible. His weapon was faith. He believed and he trusted God's plan. He could have retreated. He could have ran. But he continued to run toward danger. And God saved him as he saved other people. Let's, let's look at a verse here real quickly. Go to Jeremiah 29, 11, Because many of us have read this verse. But we've stopped right at Jeremiah 29, 11. We haven't read beyond Jeremiah 29, 11. Look at this. I love this because this is how, how Desmond found what God wanted for his life and yet was resisted. Look, it says, I know. Everybody say, I know. I know. He says, I know the plans I have for you announces the Lord. Come on. God says, I know the plans. If God knows my plans, man, I want to know what his plan is. Why don't we want to know what God's plan is for our life? Why? Why wouldn't you want to know the plan that God has for your life? That means that you all have a plan. All of us. And there's benefits with that plan. And God wants you to discover that plan. And he says this. And he says, announces the Lord. I want you to enjoy success. Anything wrong with success? Heck to the no. I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for the years to come. Then, everybody say then. then. See, once you know this, then you would start calling. See, if you truly believed that God has a plan for your life, then you would start doing the next verse. Then you will call out to me. You will come and pray to me. So I'll get on the phone. I'll call. Then I'm coming. Call. Then I'm coming. And, and he says, and, and I will listen to you. I will listen to you. I will, li you mean God's not, he's not too busy to listen to me? Nope, he can listen to you. God wants, God is just waiting for you to call. Look, and he says, um, did it, verse 13, when you look for me with some of your heart, you will find me. I'm sorry. When you look for me with a fraction of your heart, you will find me. When you look for me with a piece of your heart. No, he says when you look for me with all your heart. With all your heart. That means that, man, when I see God, I'm all in. And so many of us, if not careful, you're so saved that you don't give it all anymore. Why? Because you got tired. You got weary. Things aren't working out. So what happens? Let's retreat like everyone else does. God doesn't want you to retreat. God wants you to press. God wants you to push. Let me tell you something. Purpose will help you overcome pain. Purpose will help you overcome pain. And there is pain when you live on purpose. But when you're on, on, on God's purpose and plan, you'll overcome the pain that it comes with. And it does come with pain, trust me. There's not a week at Elevate Church that I don't have a problem. The moment I said yes, boom, every single week. It's been seven years since we've opened this church. And there has not been one week 
that I have not had a challenge. But when God calls you, when you discover your purpose, he graces you for that call. He graces you for that purpose. Yes, you'll be challenged. Sometimes you'll be like you're being flawed by people, right? Because, man, where there's people, there's an opportunity to love them. Praise God. (laughs) What else are you going to do? Hate them? (laughs) The temptation is there sometimes to just dislike some people. (laughs) I'll be fine. Look at this. I will be found by you. Announce it. But pastor, I've been praying. I've been praying. I've been seeking God. And man, he doesn't talk to me. No, 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 no. If you believe what God says, he said, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Does God lie? No. no. So I've been, I've been fasting. No, see, here's what happens. We have manipulated prayer. When we come to God, We manipulate our prayer with bringing our ideas to him, our opinions to him, not realizing that God has already pre-planned your life and has already approved it. And you're trying to come in altering the plan of God by your manipulative prayers that we've all done. I've done them too. God, when I started Elevate Church, I was like, God, tell me you are not calling me to Elevate Church. Like, that was my prayer. Like, tell me you don't want me to pastor God. Just tell me, and I will not do it. Praise God. <laughs> and, and we sound so spiritual. Like, 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 yeah, did you pray? But yeah, I prayed to God. No, you manipulated. God ain't even listening to you. You know why? Because so many times we're just praying prayers that we want. But have you ever thought, God, what is your will for my life? What do you want me to do in my life? I'm done. I'm sick and tired of trying to manipulate this this wonderful thing called life. And I want to get on it because if not, time will pass you by. And then one day you'll wake up with a lot of regret. Serving God five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And you're still the same old person. Same old drama, same old thinking, same kind of faith. Listen, with God, we go from glory to glory. God wants, God has a purpose for your life. Your job is to discover it. God wants you to discover the plan that he has for you. Now, let me give you three truths. These are statements. Number one, look at this. What are we now? And I say we because this includes me. What are we now? We are the total sum of the choices that we made. Can we just agree to that? We are. Who we are right now is the sum total of the choices we've made. This is who we are. Number two, look at this one. Who are we today? We are the result of the choices we made in the past. We are. We are the choices. Or we are the result of the choices that we made in the past, right now. You know what? If you're not happy, then change it. Because it's a choice. Do something. Stop being consumed with the problem and start being consumed with the Bible who has the answer to all your problems. Well, I don't know where to start. See, that's the problem with the American church. We, want, we always want someone to grab us by the hand and tell us what to do next. What if, what if you just sought the Lord with all your heart? It didn't say go seek the Lord with 10 friends and have a Bible study. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Bible studies. We do them here. But there is a problem when you don't seek God with all your heart. Third one, look. Who will we be tomorrow? The decisions we are making today will determine who we will become and what we will do tomorrow. Get that in your spirit right now. Who are you going to be tomorrow? I'm going to be God's man. Come on, you're going to be God's girl. You're going to be God's guy. You're going to be a Bible person. You're going to be someone that no longer is just living, just haphazardly and just kind of, you know, whatever the, whatever the wind blows my way, that's what I'll do. You don't choose what you do. You discover what you've been called to do. You discover it. You discover it. 
God wants you to discover what he has for you. I love that. Come on, we need to learn how to be more purposeful versus being popular. Popular doesn't pay. Sacrifice to discover God's plan, that brings results. I'm bringing you this message today because I truly believe that God wants to reveal your plan for your life. But I'm comfortable. That's the problem. You're too comfortable that you're no longer believing God anymore for anything. Yeah, but, it, but I have no complaints. Well, that's awesome. But there should be some resistance in your life. There should be. Pastor, that's negative. No, that's war. Let me give you a verse here. Are you ready? Look at this. This is, this is what we have to remember. 2 Timothy 2, 4, quickly. It says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. And how many of us are just so entangled with the affairs of our workplace? Come on, we're so caught up in the drama. Just entangled. Just uh, No wonder I can't do anything for God. Man, I'm too wrapped up with everybody else's junk instead of doing what God says here he says that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier whether you like it or not you are God's soldier the question is are you following his orders the question is is are you living a life that resembles obedience which will begin to command the blessings of God in your life listen our desire should be, I please God. Why? Because you'll never please anybody. People will always have something else. Stop letting your critics keep you from doing God's purpose. Stop letting distractions keep you from God's purpose. When you live on purpose, distractions have no power over you. Why? Because, man, I have an aim. And I'm pressing forward. And though distractions may come, my eyes are on the prize. Amen? Purpose. Purpose. You can't just live to breathe and, and nine to five work and just go home, feed the kids. I get it. That's awesome. Those are wonderful responsibilities. But when will you find your part in God's kingdom? God has a plan for your life. He understood this. Desmond understood this. He chose purpose over popularity. Purpose will always push the pain. And trust me, when you, when you, when you live for God, it's not popular to serve Jesus. It's the most unpopular thing today in our society. The moment you say Jesus, you know, you can say Allah. Nobody gives a rip. You can say Buddha. But you walk in the mall and you start saying Jesus. Man, all eyes will turn. Why? Because there's power in that name. they be like, what in the world? You can say any other name. Nobody gives a rip. You say Jesus, all eyes turn. Why? <laughs> because he's God. He's got some influence, and he wants to influence you for his purpose. Are you hearing me today? The pathway to your purpose will always be filled with pain. Accept it. Accept it, and you'll stop quitting. Hey, listen, I quit Elevate Church like 10 times already. Y'all just didn't know it. But God hired me each day after. Back. Why? Because purpose will always be filled with pain. Always. <laughs> You're not the exception. People are going to take shots at you no matter what. Critics can't stop you. Pain shouldn't deter you. Purpose empowers you to please God. My job is to please God. Say it, I have to please God. I have to please God. Desmond pleased God. 
No one should be able to talk you out of what God called you to do, especially you. (laughs) Don't talk yourself out of your healing. Don't talk yourself out of your miracle. Don't talk yourself out of your call. Don't talk yourself out of God's plan. Don't talk yourself. Listen, the person that is your worst enemy is going to be you. Stop talking yourself out of God's purpose and plans. Stop blaming people because it's not the people, it's you. It's you. Say, it's me. It's me. I got I to take responsibility. How do I do that, Pastor? What do I do? What do I do? It's got to be difficult. How do I get there? Real simple, Hebrews eleven six. quick, quick. It says this, but without faith. Everybody say faith. faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. You want to please God? Faith. It takes faith to step into purpose. It takes faith to step into God's plan. It takes faith to walk the path of righteousness. But the Lord says that the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. And he says, and my word will be a lamp to your feet. And my word will be a light to your path. Are you hearing me? You were born with a purpose. Stop wasting life. Life is short. You're here now. You're gone. It's like aerosol spray. Hairspray. All you ladies. That's how fast life is. It's a mist. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, what? Seek him. Seek me with all your heart. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'll present it to you. Maybe the reason that you have not found, discovered your call is because maybe you haven't sought him with all your heart. All of it. Everything. If faith is the only way for me to please my God, shouldn't we go on a journey of discovering everything that has to do with faith? Like our whole journey should be like, man, I should study faith. I should start writing every verse on faith because because it pleases my God. And you know what faith does? Faith pushes you off the edge. So many of us are on the edge. We're, We're on the edge of a blessing. Come on, you're at the edge. You're at the edge. And you're like, should I jump? Should I jump? Have you ever been at a place where you want to jump in the water? Kind of like me. I was at a, with my son. We were at these rocks 40 feet into the ocean. And I was like, should I jump? And I just kept trying to talk myself out of it. No, nah, maybe, maybe we shouldn't do this today, Isaac. I, I, that's like, my son's like, Dad, are you scared? Heck to the no, I'm not scared. I'm a job. What are you talking about? Man, I ain't scared. But maybe we should try this over there because it was smaller. Faith will push you off the ledge of your edge. For without faith, impossible to please God. For he who comes to God, you must believe that he is God. I didn't do this at the 8 a.m., but I'm going to tell you this right now. And we're done. Close your Bibles. This is just my personal opinion. Don't quote me. Don't hate me. Don't send me emails like, how did you say that? Because I'll just delete your emails. What do you think is humanity's greatest sin? What do you think is humanity's greatest sin? Throw some out quickly. Unbelief. Rejection. Hate. Hate. Being social. Pride. Antisocial. Okay, what else? Rebellion. Fearful. Let me tell you something. I honestly and truly believe that humanity's greatest sin is to think that they're God. You need to relinquish control and stop playing God. And I'm talking to you Christians too. Because some of you still play God. But seek God with all your heart. 
and he will listen to you. And he will show you the plans that he has for you. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.